drawing motion is all about lines. It's lines. There are the parallel lines that are passive, and then there are the angled lines, which are more active. Lines are motion. Here's a piece that I did. I literally had bullet trails kind of going along the lines. You'll notice how the lines are much closer together over here and much farther apart over here. Pretty much everything in a piece needs to be moving towards something or away from something. The angles of the leg are moving forward. Even the angle of the gun is moving forward. The angle of the head is moving forward and the cape is trailing backward. The movement of this character is moving forward. The background adheres to this. The snow whipping. Everything in this piece signifies motion. When you look at this piece, it looks like it's moving. And we do that with lines. Now I'll answer the quick and dirty method fast so you can go, get on with your day if you're looking for it. But one of the things we do is literally use what's called a motion blur. So if you go to filter and blur, then motion blur, we can change the angle of this blur and how much blur there is. And what this is doing is it's taking whatever it's being selected and it's stretching it in a direction. And that direction follows the line of motion that you want the movement to go in. And a motion blur pretty much does that. It takes whatever is being blurred and turns it into a bunch of little lines. It helps move the eye in a direction. And that's what I did with the snow here. And another way we can do this is by making a focus blur. So another quick and dirty method is radial blur, zoom. And this is our little selection here. And we, we move the center of this roughly in the direction that we want the starting point to be. And we have it selected to zoom and we can say how much of this blur do we want. And usually subtle is better uh, because it can get really out of hand. But by doing that, you'll notice that now these dots are moving in these kind of lines because there's a focal point right about there. So lines and motion very much go hand in hand. So with this piece, you can tell which direction the character's moving in. You can tell the character is moving that way because the angle of the gun, the smoke trails, the gentle blur on parts of the character, they all lend themselves, as well as just the angle of some of these background lines, they all lend themselves to pointing the eyes that way. The angle of the body even leans forward. The arms obviously go forward. The head is, instead of straight up, it's tilted forward. Everything about this character screams in a direction. This one's gonna be pretty obvious as well. These characters are actually moving in opposite directions. They're sort of attacking one another. And you, this is illustrated very well with this, with this sword. This character starting here, and it's moving that way. And this character starting here and moving that way. And it's using a bit of dynamic range as well as motion blur and different focal points. Something in motion tends to be, you know, get this, this nice subtle blurring effect. And you'll notice how this person's head is much more in focus than its sword tip because we want our eyes to focus on this person. And this person's head and hand are both pretty much in focus, but the rest of them it's clearly moving. So using focal points help us illustrate which way characters are moving as well as give people's eyes a direction to look. So this this person here is actually framed by this energy and this energy and your eyes are drawn here and then led in this direction which then help you see the rest of the picture. This one is actually a lot less motion despite having a lot of different lines. The angle of the piece is angled down here because all the lines are moving away from this spot right here. Now that doesn't mean there's much motion in this piece, but it definitely still feels more than passive, like the two lines. This is somebody standing still. This is just a person just standing as is looking directly at us. There's no difference, there's no movement, there's no motion. But this person is desperately trying to get from A to be. Following the lines of someone lunging with a sword, for example, helps illustrate a movement in a direction. And I actually sketched up this piece to help illustrate how movement and focus work together hand in hand, as well as uh, values and how like the main thing we want to focus on is obviously this character's hand. Uh, and the main focal spot is about right there on the fist. Uh, and I actually drew this in real time 
which will be available to see and view for anybody who wants to draw along or just <laughs> enjoys watching the painting process. But you can see all the lines, including the ones in the background, are all moving away from the focal point. There is a clear motion in everything that's going on. If you follow the, the lines and the angles, everything is an arrow pointing to right about there. And you can see in this piece, there is the blurring of the radial zoom, as well as some gentle blurring, a lower and very high top area for motion blur. Now, if we wanted to, we could take a nice little smudge brush and compress all of this image down to one image and then gently smudge it back and forth. And you can see by gently taking the smudge and moving it very, very gently back and forth in a specific direction, in the direction of the motion, we add a gentle motion blur that we control on this character's fist here. See how the difference is where it's in focus as opposed to being blurred. It makes things look more in motion. So finding a nice middle ground of just subtle in focus and some subtle out of focus things might make things, you know, like look really nice. For example, this piece, this piece almost has too much blur in it. I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but this piece almost looks a little too unreadable because when you get a little closer, like everything has just a little bit of blur to it. And the chromatic aberration, which is that 3D glasses effect, which you'll see on everything, uh, doesn't really help <laughs> because that also adds a small, subtle blur to it because your eyes aren't able to fixate on one specific set of details you're looking at you know, three different colors right next to each other. So it makes the details look more blurry, even though they're not very blurry. Like for example, with this one, this one also has chromatic aberration, but it's very, very subtle. We have to zoom in for you to see, you know, the, the blue and the red. So that makes things a little easier to read. If you would like to watch the real time painting of this uh, punch sketch, because I've actually been asked quite a few times to make a real time painting piece. And it's not the full piece. I think I got the first bit of sketches in and I'm like, oh wait, I should probably record this. <laughs> it's, it's, it'll be posted at some point pretty soon. But regardless, thank you so much to my patrons and Twitch subs for making all these videos possible. Leave a like if you liked it, a dislike if you dislike it, subscribe to see more and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully you found this useful. Feel free to leave a compliment in the compliment section down below and y'all take care.